Greetings, I am Herbert Erpaderp, and today I'm going to build this otter. It's not the cute furry water dwelling creature, it's a small plastic 70 second scale representation of a light reconnaissance car. Unfortunately, I don't know of any plastic kits of actual otters. Anyway, this kit is in 70 second scale and it's from IBG, which you can probably see by looking at the box. Let's have a quick look at what's inside that box. The otter comes on two sprues moulded in a grey plastic. The parts are reasonably neat looking and fairly well detailed. I don't know a whole lot about otters, living or vehicular, so I can't point out any inaccuracies in detail or anything like that. My videos aren't really about that kind of thing anyway. I do think the detailing looks pretty good. Being 70 second scale it is a small model so you're not likely to see as much fine detail as you might on a larger scale model, but it does look pretty decent. I couldn't find any obvious defects or errors and everything seems to be pretty good quality. There are mould lines of course, but they're not the worst I've ever seen, not even close. There are a couple of smaller parts that have potential to either break or just plain old be fiddly, but that's okay, it just means you've got to be a bit careful with them. There's also a small amount of photo etch, nothing requiring any insane bending, though the long bit that you can see, which forms an unbogging ramp, was a bit tricky to bend. I might complain about that later on. There's also a small sheet of decals. There isn't a lot here, but there is enough for the two paint schemes the painting guides suggest. The instructions are about what I would expect from an IBG kit. That's not a bad thing, they're reasonably clear and easy enough to understand. There was a couple of parts where the angle of the diagram led to a small amount of confusion, but nothing too disruptive to the build. And here are the two painting and marking guides I mentioned. They're simple, as these things usually are, but again that's not a bad thing. They're just there to give you an idea for colour and to show you where the markings go. So that's what's in the box. Let us now glue some bits of plastic together. I start with the engine, mostly because the instructions say to. It's pretty simple to put together. There's a couple of small parts that go onto the side and what they are I have no idea. There's a fan that goes on the front, which didn't have any keying so you've just got to kind of eyeball it. I did build the engine, obviously, but you could just as easily not bother with it and omit it. It won't be visible once the model is all together anyway. Next, photo etch. This didn't actually need to be glued on just yet, but it's a sort of shield for the differential boxes that'll be built in the next step. These need to be bent and the instructions specify 75 degrees. I have no idea if mine are bent to that angle, but they're probably close enough. Now I build the front axle. These bits, whatever they are, go on here. I didn't realise it at first, but you need to drill these out a bit so they go a bit further onto the axle. So I did that. The little nubbins sticking out of these parts do have to go on in a particular way, and I follow that with these outer cap things, whatever they might be called. That's not too difficult, though you will have to nudge them a bit to get them as straight and neat as you can. The steering bar thing goes on next, and this connects the two nubbins I mentioned before. This is why they should be facing a particular way. It is a bit fiddly, but not the hardest thing to build. And that's the front axle done. The next logical step is to work on the turret. First, this support bracket thing goes on like so. Nothing too tricky here. The seat, on the other hand, was a little bit more fiddly to do. There's a little tab on the back wall of the turret for the seat to link into, and I glue it into place there. I follow that with this support thingy, I guess you might call it, and it goes on here. I'm not sure I got this on perfectly, but it really didn't seem to want to fit together easily, so this is how it ended up looking. It doesn't really matter too much. It's going to be on the inside of the hull, and only visible through the tiny hole in the top of the turret. I wouldn't worry too much about it. I then glue the gun into place like so. I'm not sure if the support thing is meant to elevate with the gun or what, so maybe this isn't perfectly positioned. It's on though, and that's enough for me. That's all we need to do for the turret. So I put it aside until the rest of the vehicle is together, and now we can work on the frame. It's very framey. The instructions say to remove the little raised bits on the outside of either side of the frame. I'm not totally sure that really needs to be done. I don't think these nubbins will actually interfere with anything, but I removed them anyway. I assume this means the same frame and running gear is used in another kit where those nubbins are required. What we do need for the sides of the frame are these things. 
These are leaf spring holding bits. Is that the technical name, Herbert? No, no it's not. I did try pretty hard to get all of these on nice and straight, but it was kind of tricky. If you get them too wibbly wobbly, you'll end up with wibbly wobbly suspension, and then wibbly wobbly wheels, and then an entirely wibbly wobbly otter. Then why not add the leaf springs? These do obviously have a correct way around they should be installed. Refer to the instructions if you are unsure. The front and rear leaf springs are significantly different from each other, so it should be pretty easy to avoid getting them mixed up. Next I add this cross frame bit whatever you call it. Then another similar part, this time in the center. This one has a hole in it so shafts can be passed through. Once those are in, it's time to install the engine, and I'm not totally sure I got this in exactly the right place. There isn't really any keying for it, it just kind of sits roughly where you think it should. In front of that I install the radiator. As I mentioned earlier, the engine and certainly the radiator too are not going to be visible from most angles when the model is finished, so it's totally fine if you would prefer to omit them. I put them in because why not? I'm kind of demonstrating how it works I guess, but if they'd interfered with the fit of the body I would have simply removed them. It's not yet time to add the body though, so I install the front axle with the steering bar thing toward the rear. There's no keying to lock this into place as you might hope there would be, but you can line up some of the bits of detail to get a reasonably well aligned fit. I then assemble the rear axle. It's a bit more simple than the front one, just two of the little drummy doodad things that go over the end of each axle. Easy. And now we've got a good deal of the frame and running gear together. There is more to come though, like this piece of photo etch I bent earlier. It was actually a little bit tricky to figure out exactly where this should sit. I figured it should sit on the bottom of the differential box, but it could also sit on the dome shaped part on the front of said box. I chose the former, it just seemed a bit easier and is probably a stronger bond. There's one of these pieces of photo etch for both the front and rear. Now for more mechanical bits. This I don't know what you would call it. This was actually a little bit fiddly to get into place because it doesn't just sit on the central support bit like you think it might. There's a small nubbin on top of the box thing and it's meant to sort of hang down from the cross support bit. Then I install this shaft which goes from the engine to the whatever it is I just installed. This is pretty simple and fits fairly well. The exhaust system goes in next and this almost drops right into place, but not quite. Like a lot of the other stuff here, this won't be very visible, but I did try to get it into the correct place anyway. I suspect it's going to be a little bit easier to put this in now rather than later when the drive shaft thingies are in place. Speaking of which, I put those on next. There are two of these and neither of them really fit. It could be that I've got some of my parts out of place, or it could be that they just don't fit as they should. It's not actually a huge problem though, mostly because the upper section of them won't be very visible. Well, not unless you turn the model over, so I left the gaps there at the top end. It does make it slightly harder to get the parts to sit where you want them, and they'll probably be a bit easier to break off, but at least it looks the part from the sides. Speaking of sides, I glued the doors into the hull sides which, as you might imagine, is rather simple. The parts pretty much just plop right into place. These doors do have some detail on the inside, so if you wanted, you could model them open and they'd look pretty decent. There's meant to be some guns and stuff on the insides of the hull too, but because I've got the doors closed, those bits of detail aren't going to be seen so I left them off. Then this hatch goes into place on the rear wall part. It took a bit more pressure to get into place than I'd expected it would, but I did get it on. There are also some hatches for the front plate, and I'm sure you don't need to watch me put all of those into place, which is lucky because somehow I didn't film at all. This is what it looks like anyway. Here's a piece of internal detail that I did install. It's not really necessary and you can't see it through the turret, but I installed it anyway. There is also some other things like seats, but I've left those off. I'm sure it's not too difficult to imagine what it looks like for seats to be installed here. I move right on to the rear wall part, well the rear of the fighting compartment anyway. There's some bits of doodattery on the floor part that helps you easily get this part into the right place. I follow that by installing the front plate, which is also pretty easy. It doesn't really look like it's a great fit there, but the lower section won't be visible anyway. 
the sides of the otter go on next, and there isn't really any keying for this, but the parts are shaped such that it should be fairly obvious when you've got them in the right place. The important areas to get lined up neatly are where the side parts meet the upper parts of the front and rear plates. The left side goes on just the same way as the right side did, though I would suggest leaving the first side to bond for a bit so that you can use it to press against while installing the left side without it coming undone. It's just kinda nice when things stay together. Supports for a toolbox come next, and these aren't difficult to place, but it does kind of seem like an odd design choice to me. There's one of these mounts for either side and the keying is pretty good here. Then I install the bonnet, or the hood or engine compartment lid, whatever you want to call it, it should just plop right into place. But the sides are very slightly wider than they should be, so it doesn't. It's not a big deal though. I put the front on next, and again, the sides are ever so slightly too wide, so pressure was applied. Looking back, I think it might have been a better idea to put the front on before the bonnet, but either way works really. I turn my attention to the otter's butt, which is the technical term, and I install the engine deck, which pretty much just drops right on into place. It made sense to follow that with the upper rear plate, which also drops into place nice and easy, though it did need a little bit of gap reducing pressure. Same with the lower rear plate. I was a little bit confused about which way up this goes, and it is important that you get this the right way up, because the inside of this part helps hold the body to the frame. This stowage box goes onto its little pylons next, and that's pretty simple to do. The roof goes into place next, and while it's not a horrible fit, it isn't really a good one either. There's a fair amount of gappage around it, though a bit of extra glue and some pressure was able to take care of most of it. Still, it's not perfect, and it'll need a bit of putty work prior to painting. I believe the reason for this is none of the side parts have strong keying, so slightly imperfect placement leads to these gaps. I guess it could be a lot worse. Tools on the upper rear plate come next. There's a bar, which I assume is the handle for a pickaxe, and below that goes a shovel. I assume even otter crews just love to dig. Along the bottom we have another bar. This one is probably for prying and jimmying, and then between that and the shovel we put the head for a pickaxe. Simple enough. Then, just in case we happen to feel like towing something, a towing hook and there's a fairly obvious place for this to be glued. Mud guards come next, and I thought these were kind of interesting. The raised bits on the sides of the hull, at first glance, look like they could be keying, and I guess they kind of are. But instead of sitting on the inside of the shape of the mud guard like you would assume keying would do, the mud guard mounts directly onto these bits. I don't know if I've done a very good job of describing that, but you can see what I mean anyway. It does require some eyeballing and a bit of nudging, but it's rather easy to get them into the right position. I then add this little step thing, which I think I've put on in the right way. There's another one for the other side, but I didn't video that. It'll just appear magically. The spare wheel goes on here like so. There is not another one of these for the other side. Another pair of stowage boxes are mounted on the rear mud guards, which seems to me like a pretty sensible place for them. They're easy to get into place, and should the need arise, they could hide any potential gaps between the top of the mudguard and the hull, though that probably won't be an issue. Headlamps are next, and you get a choice between the covered ones like I've used, and regular headlamps. I thought the covered ones were a bit more interesting looking so I went with those. They are a little bit fiddly to position because they don't go into a mounting hole, instead there's a flat spot that they just kinda sit on. Rear view mirrors come next, one for each side of the engine compartment, and these will need a bit of nudging and eyeballing so they look like they're in the correct place. Next, I join the frame to the body. This isn't difficult, and it's just a matter of getting the two bars at the rear to line up with the recesses on the inside of the rear plate, and then we find contact points to add glue. Easy. Wheels come next, and these were a bit of a pain in the ass, really. Not so much the wheel itself, but the hub part, which was difficult to press onto the axle. I'm sure you could force it on by applying a lot of pressure, but I wouldn't really recommend that. The suspension and axles here are not especially strong. I used tweezers to squeeze the first one together, and after that I glue the hubs into the wheels and then press them onto the axles. The result isn't really that good, but it's good enough. Messy looking wheel hubs are easily hidden by mud, and it's not even that unusual a place for mud to collect. 
There's also a photo etch unbogging ramp, or whatever you would call it, and I didn't video myself bending this because I forgot. The very thin edge part needs to be bent at 90 degrees, and that's kind of hard to do if you don't actually have the appropriate tools. Anyway, you can see it's been glued on, and I didn't omit it. Also, the turret is in place. It kind of just sits there, with no locking tabs to hold it in place. So, the 72nd scale Otter light reconnaissance car from IBG Models is now completed. But you didn't include all the interior parts, Herbert, it's not complete! I sure didn't. Feel free to include them in your own model if that's what you want. This is, in my opinion, quite an interesting looking car. I do rather enjoy armoured cars, and the kit itself hasn't turned out too bad. I mean, it's not perfect, but it is pretty nice. It will be a little bit nicer with some additional work, like some putty and then some paint, but that's for another day. I did have a couple of minor problems with the kit, mostly things like the axles and running gear being a bit weak, and therefore kind of risky to apply pressure to, meaning it was a bit harder to get things to fit properly. The way the hubs and wheels go together wasn't great, but I think it might be a bit better to attach the wheels to the axles at the same time as the axles were being put together. I think there might be less risk of damaging things that way. Obviously though, there's no way I can know that for sure. I would consider these problems to be kind of minor. A bit annoying, yes, but you can use your modelling skills to deal with them, and it's not like they render the kit unbuildable. And as you can see, it does still give a pretty good result. Is it the kind of good result that would please a rivet counter? I have my doubts. It's probably also not really suitable for a brand new beginner in the hobby either. I mostly say this because some of the parts are a bit fiddly, and as mentioned before, some of them don't even fit together properly at all. But if you're an average modeler looking to have a nice little otter of the non-furry variety, you could probably make a worse choice. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to put them in the comments section below. If you'd like to watch me build kits like this one live, I stream these builds over on Twitch, and the link to my Twitch channel is in the description below. Drop by sometime and say hello. Also, be sure to subscribe here on YouTube for more modelling videos. If you'd like to see my videos a bit early before there's any ads, consider becoming a patron. You can find links to Patreon and all of my other things like Discord and social media in the description below. Take care of yourselves, be excellent to each other, and thanks for watching. Farewell.